the party surprise. In the hills of Sodor, it was time for the Thin Controller's winter holiday party. The party was held at his house. All the children looked forward to it. Mr. Percival and his family lived near the engine depot, so all the narrow gauge engines could enjoy the party too. It was the day of the party and Freddy was working with Colin the Crane. They were very good friends. Freddy was excited. This party will be the biggest party ever. Then Mr. Percival arrived. All this cargo must be loaded before the party. Yes, sir. You can rely on us. I must visit Mountain Village Station. I will be back in time for Freddy to take me to the party. Yes, sir. Freddy told Colin all about the party. There'll be decorations, presents, and a big tree covered in lights. Freddy was excited. Colin wasn't. I've never been to a party. Colin was fixed in one place. He couldn't move from the siding. We never have parties at the wharf. Then Freddy had an idea. Maybe this year they could have the party at the wharf. It would be a surprise party for Colin, he thought cheerily. Freddy had to find Mr. Percival. He wanted to ask him if they could have the party at the wharf. I have to go and collect another flatbed. And Freddy raced away. Freddy saw Mr. Percival cycling away. Then he saw Peter Sam. Peter Sam was pulling flatbeds full of presents and coloured lights. They must be for the party, Freddy huffed to himself. I have to stop Peter Sam taking them to Mr. Percival's house. So Freddy didn't chuff after Mr. Percival. He raced after Peter Sam instead. Peter Sam, stop, stop! The party is now at the wharf. Peter Sam was surprised. It will be a surprise party for Colin. I'll take your flatbeds. Will you tell the other engines? All right, Freddy. And Peter Sam raced away. Freddy shunted the flatbeds to Colin. Leave these flatbeds until I come back. Colin was puzzled, but he still had lots to do, so he carried on working. Now I must find Mr. Percival, Freddy thought, and he raced away. On his way, Freddy met Rusty. There was something long and pointy on his flatbed. It's the tree for the party. The party is now at the wharf. Rusty was surprised. I'll take your tree. Will you tell the other engines? All right, Freddy. And Rusty raced quickly away. Freddy puffed and huffed to Colin. Leave this flatbed until I come back. Colin was puzzled, but he still had lots of other work to do. And Freddy raced away. It was getting late and Freddy still hadn't asked Mr. Percival if they could have the party at the wharf. At last, Freddy puffed up to Mountain Village Station. But Mr. Percival wasn't there. Mr. Percival's already gone back to the wharf. Oh no, I must puff back as quickly as I can. At the wharf, the flatbeds were still waiting to be unloaded. Mr. Percival was cross. Please, unload these at once. Freddy had told Colin to wait for him, but Colin didn't want to get Freddy into trouble. Yes, sir. Then Mr. Percival went to look for Freddy. Soon, Freddy puffed up to Colin. I waited for you, but Mr. Percival told me to finish the job. It's all done now. He was very pleased. Freddy looked down at the canal. He wasn't pleased at all. The lights, presents and the tree were floating away on a barge. The children would soon arrive at Mr. Percival's house and there was nothing there for the party. And there was nothing at the wharf either. Now no one will have a party and I still haven't found Mr. Percival. Freddy huffed to himself. He felt terrible. I must stop the badge. Then Freddy saw Mr. Percival. He knew what he had to do. Freddy chuffed over to see Mr. Percival. 
Where have you been? Freddy told him all about his idea to have the party at the wharf. It was a surprise for Colin, sir. Colin has never been to a party. Mr. Percival thought having the party at the wharf was a very good idea. But you should have asked me first. Ah, yes, sir. If I work quickly, I can still put everything right. All right, Freddy, but hurry now. Freddy raced to catch up with the barge. He called out to the bargeman. Stop! Please turn round and go back to Colin. All right, Freddy. Freddy steamed back to Colin. He told Colin all about the party. I wanted to have a surprise party for you. For me? Colin was delighted and surprised. Soon Colin was unloading everything for the party. Now Freddy felt very happy. He steamed away to Mr Percival's house. Freddy whistled to the children. The party is now at the wharf. Soon the children were on board and they whooshed away. All the other engines were waiting at the wharf, even Thomas. Presents were piled high, the tree was covered in lights, and so was Colin. What a wonderful party. Thank you, Freddy. Freddy was delighted. All the engines whistled and tooted, the children cheered and cheered. It was their best winter holiday party the island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Thomas and the Billboard. Knapford is the biggest station on the island of Sodor. All the engines love its bustling busyness. Today was a very special day. It was Knapford Station's birthday and there was going to be a grand party. All the engines were very excited. They were to have their photograph taken. The photograph was going to be put up on a billboard. Thomas felt very proud. I've never been on a billboard before. But the photographer was having trouble fitting all the engines into the photograph. Um, move back a bit there, James. Uh, and you forward, Percy. Yes, that's good, that's good. Now, Diesel, can you move in? Diesel moved in. The camera flashed. Thomas didn't know that Diesel had rolled right in front of him. And neither did Diesel. Later that day, Thomas puffed into Marin Station to pick up the new billboard. He was very excited. But when Thomas saw it, he was very disappointed. Diesel's right in front of me, Thomas thought sadly. No one can see me at all. Thomas puffed towards Knapford. Diesel moved in front of me on purpose, huffed Thomas to himself. Thomas felt cross. He wasn't looking where he was going. Then there was trouble. There was a cow on the line. Thomas turned quickly into a siding just in time. He hit the buffers and the billboard flew into the lake. Thomas went to tell the photographer what had happened. Don't worry, I'll take another photograph. Tell all the engines to meet me at Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas was about to set off. Then he saw Diesel. 
Thomas knew he should tell Diesel about the new photograph, but Thomas was worried. What if Diesel spoils this one too, thought Thomas. So Thomas didn't tell Diesel. Soon, all the engines, except Diesel, were back at Tidmouth. Gordon was cross. Mr. Giggles, the famous clown, is coming to the party tonight. I must collect him from the airport. I must not be late. And I have to pick up the brass band from Brendam Docks. And I have to collect the bunting and decorations from Wellsworth. Uh, uh, OK, I'll fetch the photographer right away. Thomas was steaming to Marrow. Then he saw Diesel. Diesel was puffing straight to Tidmouth. Thomas was worried. Now Diesel would find out about the new photograph. So Thomas turned onto a branch line and he raced back to Tidmouth. There's been a mistake. You'll all have to come back later. The engines were very cross. Soon they had all gone and Diesel trundled straight by. Later, Thomas had gathered the engines again. Then Thomas went to Marin to collect the photographer. Just as the photographer was climbing on board, Thomas saw Diesel. Now Diesel would see the photographer and he would find out about the new photograph. So Thomas wished lots of steam. It billowed from his boiler and filled the whole station. So Diesel didn't see the photographer and he trundled straight by. The steam has made my camera wet. I'm sorry, sir. We'll have to wait for it to dry. Tell the engines to come back later to Tidmouth. So all the engines came back later, instead of doing their jobs. At last the photographer was ready. No one had noticed Diesel wasn't there. Thomas was very relieved. But just then, Diesel oiled round the bend. Diesel was surprised to see all the engines. He screeched to a halt. Rolls of bunting went everywhere. No one told me there was another photograph. But I asked Thomas to tell everyone. All the engines looked at Thomas. Thomas felt terrible. The fat controller was very cross. Gordon, you were meant to pick up Mr Giggles, the famous clown. Emily, you were meant to pick up the brass band. And James, you were meant to pick up the bunting and decorations. None of you arrived, so Diesel had to do all your jobs. And now he is late to do his own work. Thomas was very upset. It's all my fault, sir. I didn't want Diesel to know about the new photograph. In the last one, he moved right in front of me, on purpose. I did not. The photographer told me to move. I did. Perhaps you rolled too far. Thomas knew then he'd made a mistake. I'm sorry, Diesel. I was wrong to think you did it on purpose. And I'm very sorry for causing all this trouble, sir. Soon, all the engines were lined up. The new photograph was taken. Sir, if I do all Diesel's jobs, can he collect the new billboard? That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Diesel agreed. For the rest of the day, Thomas worked hard. He did all Diesel's jobs. And Diesel picked up the new billboard, just in time for the celebrations. It was a wonderful party. There were clowns and a brass band. Diesel and Thomas agreed that the new billboard was the best billboard they'd ever seen. Blue Sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, 
streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. The man in the hills. Thomas puffs proudly all over the island of Sodor. He is especially happy to visit his friends on the narrow gauge railway. There is always something special to do or to see in the high hills. One day, Thomas puffed into the wharf. Lots of his friends were there. Hello! It was the thin controller's birthday. The little engines had a lot to do before they could go to his party. Thomas was excited. I brought a present from the fat controller. It's a special tent to have the birthday party in. We have special presents too. I'm taking decorations. And I'm taking flowers. We're taking banners and balloons. They were all very excited. I'm going to tell him a man in the hill story. They are his favorites. Thomas had never heard of the man in the hills. He was a very tall man, dressed all in white, and he lived high in the hills. No one has ever found him. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Maybe I can find him and bring him to Mr. Percival's party. That would be the most special present of all. I can help you. I know the hills better than anyone. No, thank you. I'm sure I can find him on my own. Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed. Please don't leave for the party without me. And he chuffed quickly away. Thomas raced through the hills. The man in the hills, the man in the hills. I know that I'll find him, I'm sure that I will. He chuffed to himself. Thomas puffed up to a hillside halt. There was a man dressed all in white. It's the man in the hills, he thought excitedly to himself. Please come with me to see Mr. Percival. Yes, Thomas. Right away. So the man climbed on board. Thomas puffed proudly into the wharf. I found the man in the hills. The man stepped from the cab. I'm not the man in the hills. I'm the dairy man. Thomas was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Scarloe and Reneus <laughs> giggled. We can help you find the man in the hills. No, thank you. And Thomas steamed quickly away. Thomas searched high and low. The man in the hills, the man in the hills. I know that I'll find them, I'm sure that I will. He huffed to himself. Thomas chuffed towards the mill. A man was waiting nearby. He was white from head to foot. This must be the man in the hills, thought Thomas. Please come with me to see Mr. Percival. Right away, Thomas. So the man climbed on board. Thomas puffed into the wolf. I found a man in the hills. The man stepped down. I'm not the man in the hills. I'm the miller. Thomas could see the miller was no longer white. All the flour had blown off him. Thomas was upset. The miller was worried. I still have to make the birthday cake for the party. And I have to make the ice cream. The little engines were cross. 
you said you'd bring the best present of all. Now Mr. Percival doesn't have any presents and we're all late. Thomas felt terrible. I wanted to find the most special present all on my own, but all I've done is spoil the party for everyone, especially for Mr. Percival. So Thomas asked Scarloe and Reneus to take the party tent. Please hurry. The dairyman and the miller boarded Thomas, and Thomas raced quickly away. Thomas was determined to put everything right. Thomas delivered the dairyman to the dairy to make the ice cream and delivered the miller to the mill. At last the cake was baked and Thomas chuffed quickly away with it. Thomas met Freddy at a junction. Freddy was on his way to the party. I have to get the birthday cake to the party as quickly as I can. Please, help me find a shortcut. Freddy was happy to help. Come on now, follow me. And together, they puffed quickly away. Thomas and Freddy stopped at the Green Hills Junction. Suddenly, Thomas gasped. <gasps> Bus my boiler! Look! There, all in white, was a man. He was carved into the hillside. He shone in the moonlight. It's a man in the hills. Thomas, you found him. Suddenly, Thomas had an idea. Freddy, please bring Mr. Percival here with all the engines. And Freddy raced away. <laughs> Soon, all the engines were gathered by the man in the hills. The engines gasped, and everyone was delighted. There, far away and high up in the high hills, Sir Handel was ready to tell his story. And Mr. Percival had the best birthday present ever, from all of the engines. Heave ho, Thomas. Thomas is a busy and cheery engine as he puffs and huffs across the island. He always toots hello to other engines and to children along the way, even when Thomas is pulling heavy loads. One morning, Thomas puffed into Brendan Docks. The fat controller was waiting. You are all here to welcome the new engine. His name is Hank. I've heard he's very special. I've heard he's very strong. Hank puffed into the docks. Hank was very special. He had red wheels and a bright red cowcatcher, and he was very tall. The engines had never seen an engine like Hank before. Hank looks as strong as a giant. I'm sure he isn't stronger than a Sodor engine. Now, Thomas, I have three jobs for you. First, you must take new machines from the docks to the factory. Then you are to pick up stone from the quarry and deliver it to the shunting yard. And lastly, you must pick up an old tractor from Farmer McCall's and take it to the repair yard. Yes, sir. And you must take Hank with you. Hank must see the important sights of Sodor. Be back by tea time for Hank's welcome party at Knapford. Thomas buffered up to the machine trucks. Hank chuffed alongside. Hello. Howdy, Thomas. Now you look like one of the finest little engines I've ever seen. Thomas didn't like being called little. I'm a tank engine. Thomas thought Hank was being cheeky. Those trucks are way too heavy for you. Let me take them for you. Hank meant to be helpful, but it made Thomas cross. No, thank you. I'm strong enough to pull much heavier loads than this. 
I'd be happy to help. But Thomas was already puffing out of the docks. At the signal, Thomas didn't take the track to the factory. He chuffed straight to the quarry. Thomas pulled ahead. I may not be grand, and I may not be long, but I will show Hank that I'm stronger than strong, he huffed to himself. Thomas and Hank puffed into the quarry. Now I'm going to pick up the stone trucks. Hank was surprised. Hold your huff in there, Thomas. Let big old Hank take those trucks for you. No, thank you. Tank engines can pull very heavy loads. So Thomas heaved and huffed out of the quarry. Thomas wheezed and wished. Handsome Hank gleamed and glowed by his side. Children waved from bridges. Hello, Thomas. Howdy, good to see you. Hey, Thomas, aren't you going to whistle hello? Thomas hadn't the puff to whistle hello. Hank had plenty of puff. This made Thomas feel even crosser. Thomas pulled up to the halt. He was nearly out of puff. Hello, Farmer McCall. This is Hank. He's the new engine on Sodor. Howdy, Farmer McCall. That's a mighty fine tractor you have. Say, Thomas. You look all out of puff and pull. I'll take it for you. No, thank you. And the tractor was coupled up to the end of Thomas's trucks. Thomas huffed and he puffed. His wheels spun and spun. Come on, Thomas. The train is too heavy for you. Take the pressure off your pistons. Couple me up. But Thomas was determined to pull the train on his own. We must not be late for your party. Wheel turn by wheel turn, Thomas puffed away. Thomas and Hank arrived at Marin Station. Visitors waved at Thomas. Thomas wanted to whistle back, but he hadn't any spare steam. Howdy, everybody. Thomas is overloaded right now. I'll whistle for him. Hank had lots of steam, and Hank blew the longest and loudest whistle. Then there was trouble. Thomas had cracked a cylinder. The train was much too heavy. Oh no, now the deliveries won't be made. You won't be back in time for your welcome party. And I'm not a really useful engine, or even a really strong one. Shucks, Thomas. I'm so sorry. That's too bad. I wanted to show you I wasn't just a fine little steam engine. I wanted to show you I was really strong. So I didn't want to ask for your help. But I do now. Please, Hank. I'd be happy to help. You give the orders, I'll do the pushing. Hank and Thomas dropped off Farmer McCall's tractor. The workmen were very sorry to see Thomas had broken down. Next, Hank and Thomas chuffed into the shunting yards. The yard manager was waiting. The stone trucks were uncoupled. I hope you're back on track soon, Thomas. Finally, Thomas and Hank delivered the new machines to the factory. Thank you, Thomas. Hank pushed Thomas back to Napford Station. They arrived just in time for the party. Thank you, Hank. Now all of Sodor knows what a strong engine you are. Hank smiled. And I know something too. You're the engine. Everyone cheers for on Sodor. That's something to be proud of. Thomas smiled. Hank was very special. He was a very special new friend. Captain Marvel. The narrow gauge engines in the hills of Sodor always want to hear stories. Their favorite ones are about a magical engine called Proteus. Peter Sam enjoys these stories most of all. 
One morning, Peter Sam puffed into the transfer yard. He was very excited. Thomas is collecting the famous storyteller Mary Marvel. She is going to read at a special show. All the little engines whistled and wished. I hope she tells stories about Proteus. Then the thin controller arrived. He gave them all special jobs. There is a lot to do. Please be back in good time for Miss Marvel. The little engines peep their whistles excitedly. Peter Sam collected the cream churns quickly. I hope I'm the first to see Miss Marvel, he huffed to himself. So Peter Sam raced away. The churns clinked and clanked and his wheels clickety-clacked. Freddy was waiting at a junction. He had a lot to do. You're in a hurry. Yes, I want to be the first engine to see Miss Marvel. I'm going to take a shortcut to the showground. And Peter Sam raced away down an old twisty track. Peter Sam huffed and puffed to the top of the old twisty track. Whee! He whistled as he rolled down the other side. Then he saw a thick hedge across the track. Oh no! Peter Sam crashed through the hedge. With a clang and a prang, he hit something hard. Fizzling fireboxes! There, in front of Peter Sam, was a statue of Proteus. It was sitting on a rusty old flatbed. Some farm workers appeared to see what the noise was. Oh my, look! It's a statue of Proteus. It looks very old. Peter Sam thought his boiler would burst. Then an idea flew into his funnel. No one must see the statue before the show. It will be my wonderful surprise and I will be the star of the show, he thought. Peter Sam tooted to the workers. Please, can you cover the statue? I'll be back to collect it soon. Peter Sam chuffed quickly back to the top of the old track. He stopped at the junction. Duncan chuffed up. He still had to collect benches for the show. Duncan, when you come back, don't take the shortcut. There's something blocking the track. Thank you very much. And Duncan chuffed off. Next, Mighty Mac pulled up. He still had to pick up flowers for the show. When you come back, please don't take the shortcut. There's something blocking the track. Thank you. And Mighty Mac chuffed off. Then, Freddy puffed up. He still had to pick up lanterns for the show. Freddy, when you come back, please don't take the shortcut. There's something blocking the track. Ah, thank you. And he chuffed off. Peter Sam was pleased. Now the statue of Proteus was sure to be a surprise. The farm workers had covered the statue of Proteus. Peter Sam was coupled up to the flatbed. Peter Sam pumped his pistons. The cream churns were heavy, but Proteus' statue was even heavier. Peter Sam huffed and puffed to the top of the hill. Now I can roll down the other side, he thought. Peter Sam raced down the hill. There was a junction ahead. Oh no! This load is too heavy! Help! Peter Sam smashed into a buffer. The cream churns crashed. The junction was blocked. Bubbling boilers! I'll never be the star of the show now! The other engines can't get through! I've spoiled everything for everyone! Then Peter Sam heard the whistles of his friends. Duncan, Freddy and Mighty Mac arrived at the junction. They were surprised at the mess. Peter Sam felt very silly. I'm sorry, I wanted to be the star of Miss Marvel's show. He told them about finding the statue of Proteus. The engines gasped. 
The statue belongs to us all. Please, will you help me take it to the show? His friends were happy to help. Duncan chuffed away to find an engineer for Peter Sam. Mighty Mac puffed to tell Mr. Percival about the statue. Freddy, will you take Proteus to the show? Freddy was delighted. It would be an honor. Soon the engineer fixed Peter Sam's brakes. Now you're ready to go, Peter Sam. Later, Peter Sam collected fresh cream from the farm. I know Miss Marvel's show has started, but all the other engines will be there to enjoy the statue. Peter Sam chuffed his long way back. Peter Sam puffed up quietly. Miss Marvel was just finishing her last story. Oh my, the statue is still covered. Today, one of our engines found something very special. So this is for all the little engines of the hills, because you are all special. Everyone gasped at the wonderful statue. The engines whistled. Peter Sam smiled. We are all stars of the show. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Push me, pull you. One bright spring morning at the coal yard, the yard manager was talking to Scar Lowy. A puppet show is coming. The children will be excited. No one in the hills has ever seen a puppet show. Scar Lowy wanted to pull the puppet show special, so he raced away. Scar Lowy puffed into the transfer yard. Thomas and the thin controller were already there. Please, sir, may I pull the puppet show special? That's a fine idea, Scarlowy. Scarlowy's boiler bubbled with excitement. Watch out! They're heavy! Scarlowy buffered up. Slowly, Scarlowy puffed away. The trucks were heavy. But Scar Lowy was happy. The puppet show special was his. Scar Lowy heaved and hauled up the steep hill. At last, he reached the top. Reneus was there. He was very excited to see the puppet show special. Those trucks look heavy. I could help you. But Scar Lowy didn't want to share his special with Reneus. No, thank you. I can pull these trucks on my own. <laughs> I'm stronger than you. No, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Then an idea flew into Scar Lowy's funnel. We'll put the trucks between us and pull our hardest. The strongest engine will pull the puppet show special. Reneus was soon coupled up to the back of the train. They pulled with all their strength and steam. First, the trucks trundled one way, then they trundled the other. Scar Lowy was determined to win. Then Reneus heard a creaking and a cranking. He knew the couplings were being pulled too hard. But Scar Lowy wouldn't give up. I must win, he thought. Then there was trouble. 
With a crack and a clank, Reneus's coupling snapped. The puppet show trucks bashed and bumped into Scarlowy and pushed him down the other side of the hill. Scarlowy was scared. He tried to apply his brakes, but they wouldn't work. Scarlowy flew faster and faster down the steep hill. Scarlowy saw Duncan. He was pushing trucks and bunting onto the main track. Look out, Duncan! Stop! But it was too late. Scarlowy crashed into Duncan's trucks. Bunting flew into the air. It fell all over Scarlowy. Duncan was cross. Oh, sorry, Duncan, but I must get the puppet show to the children. Scarlowy raced on. The puppet show special clattered and chattered. Then Scarlowy saw Rusty at a junction ahead. Rusty was pulling trucks of special ice cream. Out of my way! I can't stop! Rusty stopped right across the tracks. Scarlowy bashed into Rusty's trucks. Ice cream flew into the air and splattered all over the engines. Rusty was cross. Now there would be no ice cream at the puppet show. Sorry, Rusty, but I must get the puppet show to the children. So Scarlowy clattered on. Scarlowy was puffing towards Percival Pond. Then there was trouble. Scarlowy went round the bend too fast. He steamed into a siding. Scarlowy bashed through the buffers. With a splash, a sploosh and a splosh, Scarlowy plunged into Percival Pond. Fizzling fireboxes. I wanted to pull the puppet show special on my own. Now look what I've done. The children won't have ice cream or flags and they won't have their puppet show. Help! But there was no one there to hear. Then Scarlowy heard a whistle he knew. That's Reneus, he thought. Reneus puffed to the edge of the pond. Scarlowy had never been happier to see his friend. I puffed as quickly as I could. Ha <laughs> ha, I thought you might need my help. Uh, I do. I wanted to show you that I was the strongest. But all I have shown you is that I am the silliest. But Reneus was happy to help. Slowly, Reneus heaved and hauled his friend out of the pond. At last, Scarlowy was back on the rails, but his firebox was out and his coal was wet. Reneus, you must take the puppet show to the children. I have other jobs to do. <gasps> Thank you, Scarlowy. And Reneus puffed proudly away with the puppet show special. Scarlowy had a lot to do. He delivered new trucks of ice cream to Rusty. Then Scarlowy found Duncan. Duncan's trucks were now filled with the bunting. I'm going to be late for the puppet show. Don't worry, Duncan. I'll help you. We'll steam to the showground in no time. Duncan and Scarlowy arrived just in time. The children were gathered round the puppet show. Welcome everyone to the first puppet show in the hills. The children cheered. Scarlowy puffed up to Reneus. You're my best friend, Reneus, and there's nothing stronger than friendship. James works it out. James is a bright red engine. He always likes to look his best, to do his best, and to show other engines he knows best too. It was winter on the island of Sodor. 
Thomas, Stanley and James were working at the yards. They were shunting trains to take to Great Waterton. They had to arrive on time. Stanley watched James shunting his trucks. They wiggled and giggled. <laughs> James quickly biffed and bashed his trucks into line. You're the best biffer I've ever seen. Hey, that was nothing. See how easily I can shunt heavy Hector? James collected Hector. Stanley watched as James shunted Hector to the back of his train. Snow started to fall. I'm ready to leave. I'll see you both at Great Waterton. It's starting to snow, James. You should check the weather with the yard manager. James didn't want to be told what to do by a truck, especially in front of Thomas and Stanley. I'll decide what we do. The weather doesn't bother me. So James buffered up to his train and steamed slowly out of the yards. James puffed through the countryside. The snow was getting heavier. James stopped at a signal. Harold swooshed in. There's bad weather all over the island. It's very hard to see the tracks. Then we better go through Henry's tunnel. James sniffed. He didn't want to be told what to do by a truck, especially in front of Harold. I'll decide what we do. We'll take the track through Shen Valley. It's the quickest way. The signal changed and James puffed away, pushing his train. James arrived at the Shen Valley Junction. Now the snow was very thick. It made it hard for James to see ahead. James puffed on to the wrong track. James thought he was steaming through Shen Valley, but he wasn't. He was steaming towards the snowy hills. James saw Edward in a siding. He was wearing his snow plough. The ice has made the line ahead very slippery. It will be hard to shunt your train up the hill. James was surprised he was in the hills. I must have taken the wrong track, he thought. I've had to clear snow from lots of lines. James was worried. We need Edward's help. He could couple up to the front of the train. But James didn't want to be told what to do by a truck, especially in front of Edward. I'll decide what we do. I can manage on my own. So James puffed slowly towards the hill. James huffed and puffed. He steamed and strained. His face was now as red as his boiler. James arrived at the top of the hill. He was very pleased. Now I can puff fast down the other side, he thought. Then there was trouble. Hector could see a snow slide had blocked the line. Hector knew that if James slowed down at the bottom, they would get stuck in the drift. Onwards, onwards, don't slow down. But James didn't want to be told what to do, especially by a truck. I'll decide what we do, he huffed to himself. So James applied his brakes. The train smashed straight into the snow, and it stuck. James couldn't make his delivery. He felt very bad. <laughs> James is silly, James is slow, James has got us stuck in snow. James wished he had checked with the yard manager about the weather. He wished he hadn't tried to find his way through Shen Valley, and he wished he had asked Edward to be his front engine. Now I know Hector was trying to help me. <laughs> the trucks giggled. Quiet! Please, Hector, how can I deliver my train on time? Hector was happy to help. 
I'm a very heavy truck. We must race down the hill at full speed, then we will biff the train right through the snow. What a good idea! So Hector was uncoupled from the train. James wished and wheezed. At last, he had hauled Hector back to the top of the hill. Go, James, go! Hector and James raced faster and faster down the hill. There was a mighty biff, and Hector pushed the train right through the snow. We did it! Well done, Hector! Hector was pleased. Thomas and Stanley were already at Great Waterton. James, Hector and the train arrived. You made it. We were worried. I wasn't worried. Hector helped me all the way. Thomas and Stanley looked surprised. You can always rely on a good truck. Hector was happy to be a good truck. And James was happy to have a new friend. Henry gets it wrong. The Sodor wishing tree is a very old tree. It's older than Edward, older than Sir Handel. It's even older than the Fat Controller. Some say it's the oldest thing on the island. All the engines and children love to make wishes whenever they see the tree. Especially Henry. He thinks the wishing tree is magical. He whistles whenever he passes. One day, the Fat Controller arrived with some very bad news. A summer storm struck Sodor last night. The wishing tree was hit by lightning. All the engines were upset. Henry was the most upset of all. Some special woodsmen are arriving at Brendam Docks. Henry, you must take them to the wishing tree right away. Henry knew this was an important job. They have to be back at Brendam Docks by tea time. That's when their boat leaves. Yes, sir. And Henry puffed away as fast as he could. He chuffed towards Brendam Docks. At a junction, Henry decided to take the track that passed the wishing tree. Henry arrived at the wishing tree. It wasn't standing tall anymore. Some leaves were gone and some branches were broken. Sometimes, Henry, special woodsmen have to cut trees down. Oh, no. Now Henry was even more upset. Henry took the track to Brendan. His boiler bubbled and his steam sighed. But then he had to stop. Toby was blocking the line. He had snapped a piston rod. Oh dear, I can't get to Brendam if the track is blocked. Then Henry had an idea. If all the tracks were blocked, no one would be able to get to the tree, he thought. Then no one would be able to cut the tree down. I'll take your trucks for you, Toby. He buffered up to Toby's truck. Toby's driver coupled Henry to the trucks. Henry pumped his piston and chuffed back down the track to the wishing tree. Then Henry saw Thomas at a signal. He had a long line of empty trucks to take to the quarry. I'll take your trucks for you, Thomas. Thomas happily agreed. So Henry reversed onto Thomas's track, and he slowly wished away. Then Henry saw Percy at a water tower. Percy had to take truckloads of empty milk churns to the farm. Percy, I'll take your trucks for you. Thank you, Henry. Percy shunted his trucks onto the main line. Henry buffered up to Percy's trucks and whooshed away. 
Then Henry saw Emily. She had empty trucks to take to the coaling plant. I'll take your trucks for you, Emily. Thank you, Henry. So Emily shunted her train onto the main line. And Henry coupled up. He chuffed happily away. Henry had the longest line of trucks a big engine could pull. At last, Henry puffed to the Wishing Tree Junction. He left Emily and Percy's trucks on one track. Then he shunted Thomas's trucks onto another. Finally, he shunted Toby's trucks onto the express line. All the lines to the wishing tree were blocked. Now nobody can get through. The wishing tree will be safe. At Brendam Docks, the special woodsmen were waiting. Henry hadn't arrived, so the docks manager asked Salty to take the woodsman. Aye, yes, sir. Salty tried to get to the wishing tree, but all the tracks were blocked with trucks. Henry was still feeling very happy. Then he heard Harold hovering over him. Henry, old chap! The special woodsman can't get through to the wishing tree. They're the only ones that can help. Without them, the tree will have to be cut down. Oh dear, the woodsmen are here to save the wishing tree, not cut it down. I have made a very big mistake. Henry felt terrible. Now I must put everything right as fast as I can. And he chuffed quickly away. First, Henry took Toby's trucks to the depot. Then he took Thomas's trucks to the quarry. Next, he took Emily's trucks to the coaling plant. Finally, he took Percy's trucks of empty milk churns to the farm. At last, all the tracks were clear. Henry collected the special woodsman. Thank you, Salty. Then he wished quickly away. Soon, Henry chuffed up to the wishing tree. The woodsmen were ready to start their very special work. They cleared and propped. They clipped and chopped. And Henry held too. Soon the wishing tree was standing tall again. The wishing tree was saved. I wish the wishing tree would last forever and ever. The special woodsman cheered, and Henry smiled his biggest smile ever. <laughs>